the Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the one and only Miracle Whip salad dressing. And friends, you know Miracle Whip is the one and only salad dressing with that delightful flavor, that lively, teasing flavor that's peppy and yet not a bit too sharp. It's a distinctive flavor that millions prefer. That's why Miracle Whip is America's favorite salad dressing. Try it. Taste Miracle Whip yourself. I'm sure it'll be your favorite salad dressing, too. The one and only Miracle Whip. It's a cold, wintry morning in Summerfield, and the great Gildersleeve is in no hurry to get out of the house. Yeah, I think I'll just sit by the fire a minute. What the heck? No use trying to warm up the car until I'm warmed up myself. Look at the frost on the window, Unc. It looks like palm trees. Uh, palm trees. May I see the morning paper, Marjorie? Oh, of course, Unky. Yeah, thank you, my dear. Even Bronco's in no hurry to get to work this morning. Well, it isn't a very good day to show real estate, Marge. The prospects might be a little cold towards it. <laughs> oh, Bronco. Oh, brother. <laughs> Leroy, don't you think you should be shoving off for school? I'm in no hurry either. <laughs> well, look at these cars buried in the snow back in New York. <laughs> You think I'll turn to the local news? <laughs> uh, vital statistics. You uh, just think, kiddies. You'll soon have your name in here. That's right, Mr. Gildersleeve. In about two weeks, we'll have a little vital statistic. Oh, Bronco, you're so clever early in the morning. Oh, Marge. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Bronco Thompson announced the arrival of a lovely baby girl. No, wait, it's a boy. It's a girl. It's a boy. No, wait a minute. It's a boy. It's a girl. It's Superman. <laughs> Leroy, get ready for school. Okay, I had my fun. <laughs> well, boy or girl, we'll be happy, won't we, Bronco, darling? Oh, we sure will. Yeah, we'll all be happy. Say, I wasn't aware of this. Uh, what is it, Unky? You know, just reading this column. 30 years ago today. Oh? It says, 30 years ago today... Mr. Richard Peavy established Peavy's Pharmacy at his present location. Well, what do you know? Mr. Peavy migrated here from near Chestnut Ridge, Indiana. Isn't that sweet? Thirty years in the same place. Yeah, it hasn't changed much, I guess. What hasn't changed much? Leroy. I'm ready for school. What hasn't changed much? Mr. Peavy's drugstore. He's been there 30 years today. Gee, Unc, that's longer than you've been water commissioner. <laughs> right alongside, my boy. Gosh, 30 years in that same little building. He ought to own a flock of drug stores by now. Well, Peavy's content to stay put. He's not the driving type. He's not like you, is he, Unc? Well, no. Gosh, look how you've spread out. Hey. <laughs> What do you mean, Leroy? Well, since you've been water commissioner, you've put pipes all over town. Oh, really? You know, Mr. Gildersleeve, it'd be interesting to see what a man like you could have done with a business like Mr. Peavy's. Well, I'd have branched out, believe me. I'll say. Why, now, Unc would own all the drugstores in town. Maybe all of them in the United States. Yeah, what a fine little boy. Leroy, don't you think you should run on to school? Run? After all that, I thought I'd get a ride. <laughs> Hey, George, I think I'll stop in and congratulate Peavy before going to the office. Oh, look at that little drugstore. What a sign over the front. Sparrows have built a nest in his mortar and pestle. Oh, I, in 30 years, I'd have had a drugstore a block long. Good. I guess this is a red-letter day in Peavy's life. Yeah, I'll bet he's celebrating. Yeah, good morning, Peavy. Oh, 
Oh, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> what can I do for you today? Yeah, I just dropped in to congratulate you, Petey. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I want to congratulate you on your 30 years in the drug business. My, my, has it been 30 years? <laughs> well, it was in the paper this morning. You don't say. You mean you haven't read it? Well, if I'd read it, I guess I'd have known it. <laughs> Petey, I'm surprised at you. I thought you'd be celebrating. Well, care for a Coke on the house? That's not celebrating, Petey. If I were running this drugstore, I'd have an ad in the paper and flowers around. Well, the drugstores sell a lot of things, but I never heard of them selling flowers. Yep. Now, my idea of celebrating would be to close up and go home. Say, that's an idea. You deserve a day off, Petey. Why don't you? Well, Mr. Gilbert, please. My doors haven't been closed during business hours but once in 30 years. Yeah. That was shortly after Mrs. Peavy and I married. She phoned the pharmacy one afternoon and she was crying and I locked up and went home. What was the matter, Peavy? She'd burned the biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. Peavy, I think you should go home again. Well, I... Uh... No, I, I can't afford it, Mr. Gildersleeve. I have to keep things humming. Keep humming, he says. Peavy, would you feel more like taking the day off if I stay here and run your drugstore? You? Sure, me. <laughs> well, the drugstore is a little out of your line, Mr. Gildersleeve. What if somebody wanted a prescription filled? Well, if that happens, I can always phone you, Peavy. Yeah, I can run the rest of the store, like I run the water department. Well, you run that on the taxpayer's money. This is my money. <laughs> well, they wouldn't keep me there if I didn't do a good job, Petey. Hmm, I hadn't thought of that. Say, here comes a customer. Let me handle him, Petey. That's no customer. That's your son-in-law. Toughest kind of customer. Well, hello, Bronco. Oh, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Hi, Mr. Peavy. Hello, Bronco. What can I do for you? You stand aside, Petey. Bronco? I'm helping Mr. Peavy on his 30th anniversary. Oh? Oh, bully for you, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah, with me behind the counter, it'll be the biggest day he's ever had. Yeah, what can I sell you? A uh, package of gum. <laughs> Big day. <laughs> no, wait a minute, Peavy. Bronco, how are you fixed on razor blades? Oh, I've got plenty, Mr. Gildersleeve. You never have enough razor blades. Take this package along. Well, I... Now, how about this shaving brush? Genuine badger tail. I've got one. Yeah, but it's worn out. I saw it in the bathroom. And you should buy this gentleman's toilet set, too. Mr. Gildersleeve, I don't Men's need it. talcum, toilet water, soap. Yeah, but Mr. Gildersleeve... Your uncle, take it. Yeah, but I don't... Oh, oh my shin. <laughs> All right, I'll take it. My, my. Yeah, now, let's see. How about this nice cigarette lighter? I don't smoke. Well, you can hold a light for your real estate customers. Take it with you. All right, all right. But how much is all this going to cost me? Yeah, I'll total it up and tell you tonight. Call again. Yeah, sure. <laughs> well, Peavy? Mr. Gildersleeve, you're quite a salesman. Yo, I was easy on him. He's a relative. George, I'll get things going around here. Peavy won't know the place. Hello? Hello, Judge. Gildersleeve. Come over to Peavy's drugstore right away. What's the matter, Gildy? Is there a fire? Yeah, not yet, but things are getting hot. It's Peavy's 30th anniversary, and I'm running the store for him. I'm calling a meeting. What kind of a meeting? Yeah, never mind. Get off your rowing machine and come on over. All right, I'll be there. Yeah, that's the stuff, Horace. Hurry up. Yes, sir, the atmosphere in this drugstore is changing already. Electricity in the air. Is dynamo at work. Yeah, I'll open Peavy's eyes. Let him see what a real business organizer can do with this drugstore. Floyd's Barbershop, Munson speaking. Hello, Floyd. Gildersleeve. Hi, Commish. Floyd, close up your shop and come over to, Pe come over to Peavy's. It's very important. What's the matter? You stuck in the phone booth again? <laughs> no, Floyd. This is Peavy's 30th anniversary in the store. Yeah, I sent him home. I'm running the place for him all day. No kidding. How'd you ever get the Peave out of the store? Well, I practically had to push him. But the day off will do him good. Yeah, one day off in 30 years ain't gold bricking. Yeah, and me in charge will do his pocketbook good, too. Yeah, how soon can you come over? 
What do you want me for? Well, I've got some great merchandising ideas, Floyd. And I'm counting on you and the judge to help me put them over. Okie dokie. I'll be there as soon as I shave this guy's neck. Yeah, fine. Be looking for you. Well, I'm going to run the drugstore. I may as well slip on one of Phoebe's white jackets here, I guess. I did it. He's going to be a little tight in spots. You ripped. Well, I can fix that with adhesive tape. Yeah, let's see how I look in front of the mirror. Not bad. Who's that? Well, the judge. Good morning, Peavy. Judge, I'm not Peavy. Oh, you're the new delivery boy. <laughs> yes, yes. I just had to have my little joke, Gildy. Yeah, well, you had. This is a splendid thing you're doing, making Peavy take a day off on his 30th anniversary. Well, it'll be good for Peavy in more ways than one. Wait till you hear what I have in mind, Judge. I'll double his sales. Oh, what's the plan? Well, now, wait a minute. Here comes Floyd. Hi, Judge. Hello, Floyd. Hi, Floyd. Hi, Kavish. Hey, it's a nice thing you're doing for the peeve. Yeah, there's nothing, Floyd. I figured a day out of the drugstore will do him good. Yeah, he ain't breathed nothing but sanitation in the last 30 years. <laughs> I remember the day Peavy opened, and the pharmacy hasn't changed much since. Yeah, well, you'd hardly call Peavy a go-getter. He's content to sit here and wait for business. You're not me. I'm going out after it. That's the spirit. Anything for Peavy. Yep. I'll take over the prescription department. Always wanted to roll a few pills. No, wait a minute, Floyd. A barber can't fill prescriptions. Oh, yeah? I'm no amateur around drugs. At the shop, I mix my own tonics. I thought my hair was getting a little thin. <laughs> no, fellows, fellows, we aren't going to monkey with drugs. We'll call Petey for that. And I'll run the soda fountain. I always wanted to squirt soda. I'll run the cigar counter. Yo, fellas, wait. I'll run the store. Let's not forget this was my idea. Wow. And why did you call us, Gildy? Well, I thought you and Floyd could be the outside men. Outside men? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I doubt if anybody saw that little item buried in the paper. Nobody knows it's the 30th anniversary of Peavy's Drug Store. We have to do a selling job. You fellas can go out and tell people about it. Send the customers in. Let me get this straight, Commish. You mean you sit here while we go out and beat the brush? Yeah, that's the idea, Floyd. Uh-uh. But Floyd... Bill Floyd Munson is going back to his shop. Come to think of it, Gildy, I should be in court today. But, and judge... I know somebody who ought to be at the water department. Yes, Gildy. Who's running your business while you stick your nose in somebody else's? You watch it, Horace. How? Oh. I have the water department so well organized it runs itself. And I'll do the same for Petey, whether you help me or not. Oh, yeah? I bet you haven't sold a dime's worth. You don't know? Well, what have you sold, Gildy? Plenty. Fellow came in for a package of gum. And before he got out, I sold him razor blades, a shaving brush, a gentleman's toilet set, and a cigarette lighter. And he doesn't even smoke. No kidding. Really, Gildy? You bet. And if that isn't selling, I'll eat your hat. Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, Bronco. Hi, Bronco. Hello, Bronco. Hello, men. Uh, Mr. Gildersleeve, I've been thinking it over, and I'm bringing these things back. <laughs> Bronco. I don't need them. What's this? Let's see what we have here. Yofer. Razor blade, shaving brush, toilet set, cigarette lighter. Yeah, and I don't even smoke. Some salesman. Here, Gildy, you may eat my hat. <laughs> you eat it yourself, you old goat. You. Buck up, Gildersleeve. The day is just beginning. The great Gildersleeve returns in a moment. If a touch of the summer sun is just what you'd like these cold days, jot down this wonderful salad idea for a sunnier menu... It's called Sun Glow Salad, and you make it this way. On an individual salad plate, make a bed of lettuce. On that, place a slice of canned pineapple, and then a canned peach half cut side up. Then just fill that golden peach half with Miracle Whip salad dressing and garnish with a cocktail cherry. And get ready for some mighty wonderful eating, because Miracle Whip salad dressing gives a salad such delightful flavor. One that's not too sharp, and yet not a bit too mild. It's a peppy flavor folks everywhere call just right. 
And it's a distinctive flavor because Miracle Whip is actually a different kind of salad dressing. It's made from a secret craft recipe that combines the best qualities of old-fashioned boiled dressing and fine mayonnaise. And you'll be delighted with Miracle Whip's texture, too. You'll notice it's smooth as fine satin because Kraft blends it a very special way. Make your salads with Miracle Whip. They'll taste better than ever when you make them with America's favorite salad dressing, smooth, delicious Miracle Whip. Let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. When he found out today was Mr. Peavy's 30th anniversary at the same old stand, he persuaded our friendly neighborhood druggist to take the day off. And who's taking care of the store's business? Well, the great Gildersleeve is taking care of the store, but where's the business? That's what Leroy would like to know. Gosh, Uncle, you in charge. I thought the place should be jumping. Well, Leroy, it has been a little slow. It did sell a package of gum. Oh, brother. Here, Unc, I got a nickel. I'll buy something. Yeah, Leroy, I don't want money from relatives. That doesn't work out. Hey, I just had a horrible thought. Who's that? Maybe you're not a businessman. No, Leroy, I know what I'm doing. I had a plan. Just isn't working, that's all. Nobody's cooperating. Floyd and the judge aren't sending anybody in. Well, how about me walking up and down the street for advertising? I found Mr. Peavy's overalls in back. They got a sign on them. Oop. Gosh, gosh, bagosh. Yeah. We can change it to go to Peavy's bagosh. No. <laughs> no, that won't work, Leroy. Yeah, I might go outside, though, and pull somebody in. Hey, there's a lady coming down the street. Yeah, stand back, Leroy. I'll handle this. Maybe I can sell her some cosmetics. Hey, hey lady. Hey, did you do it? In? No, she's going on by. Don't let her get away, Unc. Stop her. Leroy. He, he wasn't me, madam. It was him. A 12-year-old boy. You wee hoss. Daggers. Let's get inside, Leroy. Quick, lock the door. Yeah, that won't be necessary. Hey, the telephone. I'll bet it's a customer. I'll get it. No, I'll get it, Leroy. All right, George, I hope it's a big order. Hello. Peavy's Pharmacy. You don't say. <laughs> Peavy, I thought you were a customer. No, um, Mr. Peavy. <laughs> How are things going, Mr. Gildersleeve? You're fine, Peavy, just fine. I even have little Leroy here helping me. I'm well, glad to hear it. Any prescriptions to be filled? Yeah, well, uh, things in that department are a little slow. The fountain doing a good business, is it? The fountain. Tell him a guy's eating an ice cream cone right now. Leroy, stay out of that ice cream. Uh, what about the ice cream, Mr. Gildersleeve? You will. It's going fast. Leroy. Okay. Uh, Mr. Gildersleeve, don't you think I should come back to the store? Now, Phoebe, this is your day off. Enjoy it. And don't worry about things here. We're on the ball. Here, listen to this. He quick, Leroy, points the cash register. Sure. Yeah, did you hear that, Phoebe? I'm a big sale, was it? Well, one of the biggest of the day. Hey, Uncle, the drawer's stuck. You? Yeah, excuse me, Petey. I have to go help Leroy. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Gildersleeve, and good luck. Yeah, I need it. I hate to let Petey down like this. Well, it's not your fault, huh? Yeah, well, let's see what's wrong in the cash drawer. Yeah. 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 Petey's bank book is stuck in it. Yeah. 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 Drop PV savings bonds. Yeah, here they are, Uncle. Yeah, thanks. Hey, what's this? Yesterday's deposit slip. $118. How does PV do it? Yeah, aspirin. Yeah, I think I'll buy some. Hey, Unc, two people. Well, come in. What can I do for you? Well, I'd like a bottle of hand lotion and some cold cream. Oh, fine, great. Step this way. Henrietta, why don't we have lunch while we're here? Hey, Unc, more people. You order for me, dear. And don't forget you need razor blades. Yeah, and shaving lotion. Say, we hit pay dirt. Gosh, they're pouring in. Great. 
Is this what you had in mind, madam? Yes, I'll take two jars of the cold cream. Hey, Aunt, the lunch counter's filling up. It is? I can't handle them all. What do I do? Well, phone for Bertie. <laughs> $1.25, sir. Bertie, one toasted cheese sandwich. One toasted cheese coming up. <laughs> Leroy, open the cash register. Okay. Yeah, and leave it open, Leroy. We don't want to wear it out. And somebody get me a box of cigars. You'll be right with you, sir. Right with you. Gosh, they're still coming in. Ain't that something? Yeah, let them in, please. Let them in. Plenty of room in the back of the store. <laughs> More coffee, mister? And somebody take the money for these magazines. Now, I'm the cashier. Boy, I want to be a druggist when I grow up. Better than double or nothing. Uh, will you please have me, please? Yes, indeed. I'd like a heating pad. Which of these do you recommend? You wish I recommend? Well, they all get hot. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I like the color of this one. Uh, nice. Shocking pink. You're doing a wonderful business on your 30th anniversary. Oh, yes. Well, how'd you know it was the 30th anniversary? Oh, the nice man in front of the post office told me about it. You're yeah, good. Yeah, I couldn't understand where all the people came from. The man in front of Hogan Brothers sent me over. Well, the judge and Floyd are helping me out. My scheme is working. Your scheme? Uh, nothing, madam. Just pay the young man at the cash register for the heating pad. And call again. Bertie, how are you coming along? Oh, I'm swamped, Mr. Gilsey, but it sure is fun. Yeah, you bet. Another chicken sandwich, Bertie. And heavy on the miracle whip. Wild chicken sandwich coming up. <laughs> Mr. Gilsey, if you ever fought two busy hands, these are those. Well, we've all got our hands full, Bertie. I guess this will open Peavy's eyes. Yes, sir. You know, Bertie, there were some people who didn't think the water commissioner could run the drugstore. Yes, sir. But you know what I think, Mr. Gilsey? Yeah, what, Bertie? As a water commissioner, you run a fine drugstore. <laughs> well, I do at that. Two hundred and forty-four, two hundred and forty-five, two hundred and forty-five and a half, two hundred and forty-six. I guess we're all through, Miss Gilsey, and I'm going home now. Yeah, all right, Bertie. Thanks a lot. You were a big help. Thank you, sir. Hey, Uncle. Yeah, what is it, Leroy? Where do I put all this paper I swept up? Well, there's a box out back, Leroy. And when you finish, come and have a dish of ice cream. Oh, boy! You were a fine, industrious boy. Takes after his uncle. Good evening, Gilda. Well, Judge. In Floyd. Hi, Commish. We thought we'd come over and see how you'd done. Yeah, business was wonderful, Floyd. I'm just counting up the day's receipts. Uh, 254, 5425. My, what a lot of money. Yeah, I ain't seen so much money since my wife padlocked the mattress. <laughs> well, that's it, fellows. $254.75. Excellent. Hey, it's the Peavy. Come and see what you have, Peavy. Well, hello, gentlemen. Peavy, it gives me great pleasure to turn over the day's receipts. $254.75. My, my. Now, aren't you glad I made you take the day off? I guess this is the biggest day the pharmacy ever had, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, it just goes to show what organization will do, that's all. Of course, I don't want to take all the credit. Floyd and the judge helped, too. That's all. Yeah, I had him out telling everybody about your 30th year in business. They sent in a lot of customers. I'm sorry, Gelde. I can't take the credit. I was in court all day. You were? Well, Floyd, you certainly did a good job. I was cutting hair all day. I told a traveling salesman about it, but he had to make a train. Well, I don't understand it. A lot of people told me they heard about the 30th anniversary from a man in front of Hogan Brothers. Another one mentioned a man in front of the post office. Somebody was spreading out the word. Peavy! <laughs> it couldn't have been you. No, no, I wouldn't say that. Peavy, <laughs> you're a smooth operator. No wonder this drugstore's been running for 30 years. <laughs> The 
Great Gildersleeve will be right back. If you'd like to surprise your guests with a mighty tempting appetizer that's just a little bit different, try this. Make deviled eggs. And for that special touch, add chopped broiled bacon to the egg yolk stuffing. And to be sure that stuffing is the best you ever made, make it with Miracle Whip salad dressing. Miracle Whip has such a wonderfully appealing flavor, a lively, teasing taste that's made it the most popular salad dressing ever created. Try Miracle Whip tomorrow. One taste will tell you why it's the favorite of millions. Delicious, distinctive Miracle Whip. Well, folks, maybe I didn't surprise Peavy with the way I managed his drugstore. But by George, we have something here that'll surprise him. Peavy! Yo, Peavy! Something I can do for you, Mr. Gildersleeve? Yes, there is, Peavy. I have a very distinguished gentleman here who wants to meet you. You don't say. Yes, indeed. The executive secretary of the Southern California Association of Retail Druggists, Mr. George Q. Baird. Thank you. How do you do, Mr. Peavy? How do you do? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, outside of Summerfield, Mr. Peavy is known as a fine character actor, Mr. Dick Legrand. Tonight marks an important milestone in Mr. Legrand's theatrical career. Fifty years in the show business. Dick, for a half a century in the theater, for your truly wonderful portrayal of Mr. Peavy, and in behalf of the National Association of Retail Druggists, I present you with this scroll, signed by 60,000 druggists all over the country, conferring upon you the official title of America's favorite neighborhood druggist. Thank you, Mr. Baird. And please convey my thanks and regards to all those 60,000 druggers. Well, what do you think of that, Peavy? My, my. <laughs> <laughs> we were really surprised you that time, didn't we? No, no, I... <laughs> I guess you did. <laughs> Congratulations, Dick. Good night, folks. <laughs> Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by Paul West, John Elliott, and Andy White, with music by Robert Armbruster. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Dick Crenna, Arthur Q. Bryan, Earl Ross, and Dick Legrand. This is John Heaston saying good night for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of those famous Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the great Gildersleeve. What's your heart's desire? A home of your own someday? A college education for the children? A trip abroad with all the trimmings? Well, the first sure step to make your dream come true is regular saving. And the way to save is by regular purchase of United States savings bonds. Buy them regularly through the payroll savings plan where you work, through the bond a month plan where you bank, and buy extra bonds when you can at any bank or post office. Savings bonds are happiness bonds for days to come. Start your bond program now. Hear the Falcon every Sunday over this station. Check your newspaper for time of broadcast and listen next Sunday as the Falcon solves the case of the mighty muscle. Here comes the one...